The Massachusetts real estate market update for July 11th, 2022. Some questions we're going to answer. Has inventory, has it started to level off, right? Have interest rates, have they stabilized? Are they going up? Are they going down? What's happening this week? And then we expected a slowdown for the holiday week. Did we see that bounce back that we ultimately predicted? Let's get right to it. So with single families, we have 5,316 single families currently on the market. There were 1,464 newly listed single family homes in the state of Massachusetts last week. Now look, this 5,316 number, that is a rebound as we expected from the holiday week beforehand. But something to note here is that that number is actually below what we saw on June 27th, right? So this is the question, has inventory gains, have they started to level off, right? Are, are, are we seeing kind of a plateau here? Or maybe are the increases, the weekly over week increases, are they going to slow down? Um, which is just going to be very important as we go into the fall market, if so. Uh, so some big question marks that we have to answer it, you know, in the coming weeks, ultimately. There were 976 single family homes that went under agreement last week, a July 4th holiday week. I can't stress enough that that is a very impressive number, 976 homes. That is a very strong number for a holiday week. There were a lot of buyers out there putting contracts in on houses and getting them accepted. There were 783 single family homes that sold last week for an average sale price of $769,000 with a median price of $610,000. And there are currently 1.56 months worth of inventory on the market. Yes, that number means nothing to a lot of people, but what that signalizes to us real estate agents is that it is a still very strong seller's market. Um, something to note that I personally really see is that under agreements, there's no doubt about it, they're down from two, three months ago, but they're down slightly. I, I was 100% wrong. I thought the, the amount of homes that we saw pending, I thought that we were, I thought we were going to take it on the teeth, if you will. We are not seeing that. We're, we're seeing that under agreements, the pending. So in other words, what's going to be our sole data for the month of July and, you know, possibly August and, and really the, the closings that are, there, that are going to happen in the next 45 days, it's still going to be pretty strong, at least for the Boston metro market. I uh, can't talk about other places nationally because our under agreements, yeah, like I said, they're down, but down slightly. So that's just another thing that we definitely need to keep our eye on that um, ultimately I think is, is truly going to be telling. So let's move over to the condo market. The condo market, we had inventory of 2,736 condos for sale in the whole entire state of Massachusetts with 584 newly listed properties last week. Again, this is a rebound from the holiday week, completely expected but again, just like in the single family home market, this is below the level that we saw on June 27th. So we're asking this question again, have the gains, have they plateaued or are the levels just going to slow down? Because it is really important. It, I, I originally had thought that we were going to see a huge pileup of inventory all summer long, which was ultimately going to drastically affect our fall market because there's going to be a flood of inventory, right? Which is going to be a really great boom for, uh, for home buyers. But if we see this inventory level off, right, if we don't continue to see it go up on the high, you know, seven, eight, nine percent week over week increases like we were seeing, then ultimately it could start telling the story of shaping up for a very different fall, fall than I had ultimately thought of or expected. So that right there is probably one of the most important stories that we're going to have to keep our eye on. We had 365 condos go under agreement for last week with 335 condos selling in the last week for an average sale price of 610000 and a median sale price of 528000 Again, just like the single family market, they had 1.56 months worth of inventory on the market, signaling a very, very, very strong seller's market. So some kind of notes to really think about and take forward as we move forward, right? The first one I have to talk about is the jobs number. The jobs number came out very strong. I mean, you dig down to some of the further data, yeah, there's some questionable stuff in there, but the actual number, the headlining number was very, very, very strong. This pretty much guarantees without a doubt that the next time the Fed meets, they are going to increase rates. There's just no doubt about it. It's not if, it's how much, right? And I'm pretty sure everybody kind of realizes that. I'll tell you, from this number, I'm kind of more thinking it's not going to be a 75 basis point uh, increase. I'm kind of thinking it's going to be the 100 basis point increase, which is going to be pretty telling. And pretty interesting. Keep in mind that that Fed benchmark rate isn't necessarily the rate that is tied 
to our mortgage rates. They are two completely different markets, but they do factor in one another. So, you know, just because it goes up 1% here doesn't mean it goes up 1% over here. Um, layoffs, they've started. There's no doubt about it. We're seeing company after company uh, announce layoffs. Uh, it's important to note that Boston is the third highest metro market in the whole entire United States with companies headquartered here that have announced layoffs. So um, a strong economy equals a strong housing market. So we have to continue to keep our, an eye on that economy number um, and ultimately what's going to continue to happen there. So those were two really big kind of telling news items that really stuck out to me this week that I really felt that I needed to mention. Uh, interest rates, they're remaining low, so they remain stabilized from the week beforehand, kind of 5.5%, a little bit lower. You continue to get really great values if you're jumping into an adjustable rate mortgage, which could be a really great product depending on your real estate goals. Ultimately, are you planning on staying in this house that you buy forever, or is this like a seven-year kind of stop timeline type thing? If so, that adjustable rate mortgage might make sense. Uh, I did a video on that that's going to be coming out soon. Um, but the uh, jumbo product as well also remains to be uh, really competitive. Um, ultimately, yes, 5.5% is higher than it was in 3% when it was back in December. But when you look at interest rates, historically speaking, 5.5% is still very, very, very low. So some things to keep an eye on. Uh, some housing markets that I'm keeping my eye on, um, the Brockton market, right, uh, as well as the Hingham market. Now, the Brockton market had an 84 in for 84% increase in the amount of single family homes on the market in the, just the last three months. So they went from 33 single families available to buyers to 61 in just three months. Meanwhile, the Hingham market actually saw a 144% increase in the amount of inventory where we went from 18 units to 44 units in the same three months. Now, why do these two markets, am I keeping my arm? Because they're very, very, very different, right? You have um, the Hingham market, which is, well, let's just say it, it's a luxury market, right? And think about those buyers, right? Ultimately, the people buying those houses probably have a lot of money in the stock market, which, by the way, the stock market has just been pummeled in the last, you know, two, three, four months, right? So, you know, if you're a home buyer and you had a stock portfolio that was worth X and now today it's worth 30% per, 30 or maybe even 40% less than it was just a bunch of months ago, well, you're probably not going out and buying that multi-million dollar house, right? So, you know, that's really telling for our luxury market, which I'm going to continue to keep my eye on. And then there's the Brockton market, right? This is the uh, first time home buyer kind of segment on the market. So what's happening here? Are we starting to see less and less of these first time home buyers come to market because the interest rates are increasing? Because ultimately that first time home buyer you know, they are a little bit more affected by these increases in interest rates. Generally speaking, they're younger, their budgets aren't as bigger. So a two, three hundred dollar increase in payment over here could really affect their affordability and their ability to buy versus somebody who might be in their second or third home and, you know, have a very established career and, you know, all that good stuff. So those are the two markets that I'm really keeping my eye on. But I got to tell you, in the last week or two, I've really become, uh, I don't want to say bullish, right? But um, heck, just, just today I had a home buying consultation where I spoke with a new buyer who's looking to buy a house, right? I've got three more scheduled for this week, right? That's really telling me that, that there is a renewed interest from home buyers to go out there and start looking for homes again. And like the lady today, she had looked three or four months ago and she just got fed up. She couldn't do it anymore, right? And now she's kind of dipping her toe back in the market. I think you're going to see a bunch of those people. But I also think that you're going to see people yet getting whacked. I have another client right now. She has like a $2,400 rental payment, right? Her rent just went up to $3,100. You're going to continue to see these rental um, inc rental rate increases. And I think that's going to continue to push some home buyers over to the uh, home buying market for to, to lock in their interest rate for a 30-year fixed and, and, and to have the stability to know that, hey, just on a whim, your landlord isn't going to increase the rate. So those are some things that I'm definitely keeping my eye on. Those are some things that I, 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 I definitely continue to just, just to monitor, I guess. But here are my closing thoughts right it's a still a really great time to buy why interest rates five and a half percent again historic lows right they're still historically low that's why it is a great time to buy um 
rental rates are going to only continue to go up and up. You can lock in your interest rate. You can get that stability for you and your family, right? And not just be at the whim of some landlord. Um, so that's why it's a good time to buy. It's also a good time to sell because, yeah, interest rates most likely are going to go up, right? And you are going to start seeing that affect the, the, the market, right? So, hey, if you're a seller, now is the time to do it and take advantage of this hot market. It's kind of like we've gone 150 miles an hour down the highway. Now we're going like 120, right? It's still really fast, a lot slower than 150. We're still speeding, but it's still a really great market to sell on. And, you know, I do have the buyer. I just actually had the buyer that said, well, I'm waiting until the, 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 home, the home market crashes. Well, hey, listen, bud, the home values, they're not going to crash this time around. If you lock in today at five and a half percent, okay, and you have that payment right there, you would, and interest rates go up two percent, which I think is really but most likely going to happen by the end of the year, right? So interest rates go from five and a half to seven and a half percent. To have that same exact mortgage payment, you would need home prices to come down about 16 to 17 percent. Keep in mind, they came down about 19% in the worst housing caused recession since the Great Depression back in 2008. I don't see that happening. There's no doubt about it. I see home prices leveling off, right? I, I, I see the market slowing down. I see where sellers can't ask for the, the stupid premiums that they have been asking, which by the way, they've already kind of stopped asking, right? Because houses that aren't priced right, that aren't good in condition and in a great location, they're starting to sit there, right? The, the market's starting to penalize, especially those sellers who overprice the houses. I mean, it's the market's kind of starting to slop them around, quite, quite frankly. Um, and you're going to see more and more of that. So I don't think this market's going to crash. We are in the, I can't, again, just talking about Boston Metro market, right? We have a very diverse economy. It, it continues to be a very strong economy. You know, we don't just have technology. We don't just have manufacturing, right? It's a very, very, very diverse economy. So that's number one. Number two is we didn't see a huge builder surge like we saw in so many other parts of the country where they have a lot of shadow inventory. And shadow inventory is, by the way, houses that they're building, houses that are available to be sold but aren't quite on the market. That's shadow inventory. We don't have that here in Boston. And here's the other big one, is we never saw a ton of institutional buyers. We didn't really see any institutional buyers, um, institutional buyers. Think BlackRock, right? Buying single family homes in our market compared to Charlotte, to Phoenix, to uh, Georgia, right? Upwards of 30% of all sales last year in those markets were institutional private equity firm buyers buying up single family houses. We didn't have that here. I think, I am extremely confident that Boston is going to weather this storm really well, um, but it's all in the data. And the data so far is looking really great. We're going to continue to keep track of it on a week-to-week -week basis, so be sure you stop by next week. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, 617-480-2600. Shoot me an email, jeff at boston2.com. Obviously, if you're thinking about uh, buying or selling a home in the state of Massachusetts, would love to chat with you and talk with you and see if I can help you out in any way. Until next time, I hope you're well.